afternoon, everybody. So grateful to be able to bring our healing school live from our beautiful Woodland Park campus again. Praise God that he's got a good report for us. He says, how many who will believe the report of the Lord? How many of you are believing what God is saying versus what's being said all around us? We've got a choice, don't we? And we're gonna go with the good news because you know what? It's been tested, it's been tried, and it's proven, and it is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God's word, we don't have to try to make it come to pass. It's already alive and powerful. So go get somebody today. We're gonna hear from Sharon Rich today, and I'm so excited that she's come to teach in the healing school, and it's gonna be a real blessing. So if you know somebody who will benefit from hearing this today, go get them and have them join you. As always, we welcome you to join us in some worship as we exalt the great physician today. on the 
fight, on the battle, on the circumstances. But God, we keep our eyes on you, the one who is faithful and the one who is always, always true. Thank you, Lord. Let's just lift up our hands for a moment here today and bless the Lord. Bless the name that is above every name. Hallelujah. He is worthy. Thank God for the cross. Thank God for the resurrection. Thank God for life and life abundantly today because of Jesus. Lord, we love you and we thank you for who you are and all that you've done. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah.
Nobody else could afford what you paid. And you didn't do it for you, you did it for us. God, we're so grateful, so thankful. Hallelujah, yeah. Oh, you're worthy of our praise, God. When I think about the Lord, how He saved me, how He raised me, how He filled me with the Holy Ghost, how He healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how He picked me up and turned me around, how He placed my feet on solid ground it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you jesus lord you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you jesus Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Come on, let's take it out. When I think about the Lord, come on, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the earth. It makes me want to shout Hallelujah, thank you Jesus Lord, you're worthy of all the glory And all the honor and all the praise It makes me want to shout place where you take residence and God can we just say how thankful we are that there's no room for sickness and disease in this temple <laughs> thank you Lord God we want to be filled with who you are Lord we we are just so overcome with gratitude at what you have provided for us God we shout our praise to you we will not be silent We'll raise a hallelujah. We'll lift up our hearts and our voices. We'll lift our eyes to what really matters. God, and we will declare to this generation that you are worthy of all of our praise. Lord, thank you that you came as the word made flesh, manifested in our presence, and we beheld your glory, the glory full of grace and truth. Lord, we're so thankful. We're so grateful. Hallelujah. We're so grateful, Lord God, that you're the name above every name. No sickness is higher than your name. No disease has authority in this temple. 
God, we thank you that our bodies have become the very temples of the Holy Ghost, living now from the inside out, from day to day. Mm, thank you, Lord. How many know today you got something worthy to shout about? Amen. God is living in us from the inside out, and that's what produces, by his grace, the ability, even in adversity, to raise up a shout. Hallelujah. You know, there's just something about a shout. I don't know. It's different than, you know, being silent or, or you know, being on your face before the Lord or, you know, raising your hands. There's just something about from time to time when you just need to lift up a shout, especially when everybody's putting masks on us and, and telling us, you know, uh, don't get too close and all the stuff that's happening right now. Man, I want to just encourage you. You know what? Let's just lift up a shout with a mask or without a mask. Amen. But let's lift up a shout to the one who has triumphed gloriously on our behalf. God, we shout our praise to you. You are worthy. You are worthy, oh God. You are greater, 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 oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If there's somebody joining you on the internet with you, tell somebody, God is greater in you than he who's in the world. Those of you here in the auditorium, would you find somebody, just tell somebody today, God is greater in you than he that's in the world. It's true. Come on, let's celebrate him in this place today.
situations and we're speaking the reality of what we see and really what we should be doing is looking at the reality and speaking the name of Jesus all it takes is looking at that situation looking in that disease looking at that financial situation looking at that child who's lost its way looking at that grandchild who's having a hard time with school anything all you have to do is look at that situation and just speak the name of Jesus the power's in the name. Jesus, Jesus. The power's in the blood of Jesus. Oh. So many times we get so trapped up in our own vocals and our own words, and all we have to do Jesus. is look at it and go, Jesus. And I will fix my eyes on the one who overcame. Yes, we will. And I will stand in awe of the one who breaks the chains. And his name is Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. His name is Jesus. No other name. Jesus. No other name. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. I challenge you in just this time, just, just watch in a week, just seven days. Anything that is around you, anything. And, and don't forget to praise his name either. Don't just use it for crisis. But in the midst of this, this next seven days, look at your situation and speak the word. Who's the word? word is Jesus you know speak his name just look at the situation and don't try to find the words to say just speak at it and just Jesus yes thank you I'm telling you mountains will move diseases will crumble bones will build blood will purify just by speaking his name we expect tons of testimonies and tons of tons of reports of how that comes through in this next seven days. Just start speaking his name over and over and over again. I promise you it'll work. above every name Thank you, Jesus. causes transformation Thank you, Jesus. as we behold him we're changed into that image not the image that the world would try to give us you, as our image to own Thank you, Jesus. But God says I've given you the Holy Ghost Amen. to help you be transformed and conform to the image of Christ not all this other craziness going on Jesus, 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 so grateful, God, for who you are, for what you've done. Oh, God, we've got so much to be thankful for. Even in the midst of what's happening in our world today, God, we're so grateful that we can be in the world, but not of the world. Thank you that our kingdom is on the inside, and it cannot be shaken. It cannot be shaken, even though everything around us may be shaken. God, you've given us solid ground. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord God, for who you are. 
Lord, there will never be enough praise for us to tell you how we, how we love you. Thank you, Lord, that you said, if you love me, you'll do what I'm saying. You'll do what I'm doing. And God, that's what we are so passionate about. Thank you, Jesus, that you said in John 14, 12, that we would do the same works that you did. The same works that you did. We've got healing on the inside that's flowing out of our hands, flowing out of our mouth, flowing out of our eyes, flowing out of our lives in Jesus' name. Rivers of living water, Lord God, bringing refreshing and healing to the nations and to the generations. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Come on, let's just lift our hands one more time and just bless him. <laughs> He's so worthy of our praise. He's so worthy of our praise. Oh God, we bless your name. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for what you've done. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. So good to worship with you this afternoon or wherever you're joining us from, whatever time zone you're in. Uh, on the internet, you know, the really good news, well, there's lots of good news happening here today. You can probably tell. But the really good news is that there is no distance in the spirit realm. One of my favorite uh, real quick stories was, I um, uh, can't remember if it was myself or somebody else, but had a word of knowledge over a particular thing that uh, God was bringing up, uh, a body part that was being healed in that moment. And somebody watched that live stream from Africa three years later after it was actually live streamed and said that's mine i'm going to take that right now and she received an instant manifestation of healing in her body three years later so here's the deal god said i sent my word and i healed them psalm 107 verse 20 he sends his word today to heal you it doesn't matter where you're joining us from the fact is you're joining us and you're believing god today for the price that jesus paid we're not going to live underneath it we're not going to live below it but we're going to live our lives abundantly because that's what jesus came to do amen so it's so good to have our prayer ministers with us today to have some people in our audience today we're a little sparse today compared to our normal but i'm telling you i'm just so happy to see people <laughs> we've been we've been live streaming since march you know, since this whole COVID thing happened. Uh, and, and, you know, it's just been me and Tracy, basically, in a, in a big old room with a camera. And, you know, I'm so grateful that we had that opportunity to do that and to connect in that way. At least we had that, right? But listen, there's no distance in the spirit realm. And aren't you so grateful that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? So before you're seated, those of you here in the auditorium, would you just greet somebody, give them an elbow or a high five or a fist bump or a hug, whatever you're comfortable with, and tell somebody you love them today. And those of you again joining us on the internet, thank you for being a part of our live stream today. We sure love you. God bless you. Freedom. Establishing identity of freedom is establishing identity in Jesus. You know, as Daniel was talking about earlier, God's grace, what God has given us through Jesus Christ is a gift. It's free. It's being given to us. Jesus paid the price. Now it belongs to us. But if you're not identifying with freedom, but instead the circumstances of life are dominating your heart to the point that you're taking on the identity of the problems, then you're going to become the problem. And then you're going to want someone to do something for you. And that's exactly how most Christians, when they come for prayer, that's a, a lot of Christians. That's the condition of their heart. They come wanting a person to do something for them. But I don't tell you something. That's how you receive help from a human. That's not how you receive help from God. God is a spirit. And receiving help from our Heavenly Father is about Jesus Christ. Which means that it's the same as Romans 10, 9 and 10. It's directly proportional in a relationship to your heart. And how you're believing. Because coming in a relationship with the Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ was believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Which means the Holy Spirit was involved in the Word opening up to us to the point that there was a response from our heart concerning Jesus. Even if our head lacked a lot of understanding, there was a heart response. Because we were believing from the heart. And the Holy Spirit birthed the life of Christ on the inside of us. And so receiving from God is where the problem belongs to Jesus. He took it, Matthew 17. He took, he bore. 
He took our infirmities. He bore our sickness. By his stripes you were healed because it took place at the cross. We're receiving something that was given to us before we were born, before we existed. But it was, it's ours in Christ. He's given it to us. Now receiving's about Jesus. It's about God's love and God's grace for us in what he's accomplished through Jesus. But receiving's directly related to your heart, your heart opening up and receiving in him. Amen. Bless God. I am so glad to see some guests in the audience. Hi. <laughs> you heard Daniel talking a few minutes ago that um, it has been just us. It's been the AVL team, and that's pretty much it. In the worship team, it's just been us, and we had no one to speak to, or they were just singing to me in the audience. So we are so glad that you are here today with us. The few that came out, we are social distancing, which is good. Mask on, mask off. We're just here because God is good. Amen. So I want to say thank you and welcome to all of our online family. You have been tuning in with us each week, and we are so glad that you are joining us here again today. What we want you to do also, we know that you're watching on all different platforms like Facebook and YouTube. Please make sure to put your comments there and any testimonies that take place during this session, even if anything happened during worship while Katrina was ministering and she was singing and the things that she said, a lot of times we have healings that take place right in the midst of worship. So today we are going to be blessed with my sister Sharon Rich. She has a powerful word for you today. So I hope you came expectant because I'm tr I guarantee you she will not disappoint. She has a word from God for you this morning. So those of you that are new to Healing School, we meet here every week between the hours of one o'clock. We usually end about three Mountain Standard Time. And at the end, we will have prayer ministry if anyone is on campus and they would like prayer. Our prayer ministers will be here for you. But if you're watching online, and perhaps you're watching um, and it's an archived version of it, our phone lines are 719-635-1111. So please call them, they are there. Our phone lines are open 24 hours a day, five days a week. So there are prayer ministers that are there with you as well that would love to pray with you. We're going to jump right into some testimonies today. How many of you like testimonies, right? So I don't know if any of you knew this, but last week we had our Summer Family Bible Conference and we had a lot of people here visiting from all over but we had some powerful testimonies that happened during healing school. So Melva was our prayer minister. She prayed for one of our guests, um, and the guest was experiencing pain, stress, and just the dread of life. You know, just different things in her family and just different situations. So Melva prayed with her, but she also reminded our guests, the first night of the conference, Andrew, he talked to us about, um, are you satisfied with Jesus? And he was talking about when Jesus was talking to the disciples in John the 14th chapter in the first verse, and, he was, and Jesus was about to be crucified and said, let not your heart be troubled. So Melva, she told our guests to, to think about that. Let not your heart be troubled about all the things that may be happening in your life. Well, after Melva prayed and the woman began to just meditate on that scripture, she received peace, All everything was gone. It was just like a lifting of spirits for her. So we are so glad that she was blessed, amen? Carol prayed for one of our guests and she was experiencing um, loss actually in the whole left side of her body. The guest had no, she had uh, pain and just no feeling in the left side of her body. After Carol prayed for her, she said when Carol laid her hands on her, she felt a tingling sensation of the Holy Spirit in her body and she was completely healed. Our guest also, her attitude changed and her whole demeanor changed. So God is still in the healing business, amen? Martha prayed for a guest and the guest had a pain in the neck. It was a stiff neck, but after Martha prayed for her, all pain was gone. Hallelujah. 
Anika, Anika prayed for Dion, and Dion was experiencing uh, back pain and pain in her arms, and she was also just carrying the weight of her job, family, finances, having a new home. She was just so stressed, and that stress, I tell people a lot, stress will take you out. It'll take you out, and that stress that she was feeling from all the other situations, it was manifesting in pain in her body. So Anika prayed for her, she laid hands on her, she began to feel the ease of the stress lift, and uh, Dion, she said that her back and her arms, no more pain. And then she said, Jesus did it. Yes, he did, Dion, yes, he did. So we want you, at the end of the service, if you have anything that you want our prayer ministers to agree with you in prayer, please write down your testimonies for us. And those of you that are viewing online, if you would email us at healingschool at awmi.net, we would love to receive your testimonies as well. And you know, we have some healing journey videos because sometimes people may not come to church or come to a service with you, but they will listen to somebody else's testimony, amen? So Daniel is gonna show us how to navigate to get there. Hi there, my name is Daniel Amstutz and I'm the director of the Karis Bible College School of Worship as well as the School of Healing. And today, I wanna to show you how to access the Healing Journeys video library. We've got some amazing stories of people who have received their healings that Jesus provided over 2,000 years ago. Everything from emotional and mental and physical healings of every kind you could imagine, but you're gonna to get to see them and their journey of how they received what Jesus has already provided. It's gonna encourage your heart. Begin by going to awmi.net. Scroll down and click the watch graphic. Once the page loads, scroll down and click the Healing Journeys panel. You will see that you can begin watching our featured Healing Journey or you can scroll through the panel on the right to see our collection of Healing Journey videos. We encourage you to do this because the Bible says that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And this is gonna be so strengthening to your faith and encouraging to you. You are gonna be so blessed and we hope that it will absolutely inspire you to live life abundantly. Amen. That is our desire for you, that you live life abundantly. So as I said earlier, any testimonies that may take place today, please put them in the chat, in the chat uh, line there so we can read those afterwards. I'll be reading those later on after the end of the session. And also email us at healingschool at awmi.net. At this time, I'm just gonna give away some product because we like to give things away. So my, my brother Jim is going to to help me pass these out. So this one, did you enjoy the worship that we had? Was that worship not good? Well, this is a CD that we had and it's called The Best Is Yet To Come. So any first time guests that you are first time to healing school, Jim would like to put that in your hand. Also, understanding the power of the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. Sometimes it's really you know, interesting and unusual for some people, but you receive power. This is actually by Pastor Dan Funkhauser. He's one of the instructors here at Caris. And also, I told you that our speaker today is um, Sharon Rich. You know, she wrote, she's got more than one book. She's got this book and she's got another book about um, the speak, the, the leader's wife. Yes. A gift to the leader's wife. And um, I read that one, it is very good. And this one is another one that we have, it's called Unity. With everything that's going on in the world today, we need to, we need unity in the body of Christ, but we need unity amongst everyone that's in this world. And this is, it's entitled Unity, the Place of the Commanded Blessing. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. You know what, I'm just gonna give this one away too. It's called God Wants You Well. It's by Andrew Walmack. And some people, they do not know that God Wants You Well. It's a CBD series that he has done. Um, and it's called God Wants You Well. And we need to get it out there, get the word out to everyone that God wants you well. They don't always know that. So just like I gave out all of those products to you, if you're looking for anything like that, our bookstore is open. It's right across the concourse there. Everything that I gave away, you can either get it online or you can also get it in our bookstore before you leave today. Well, we're gonna do another form of giving. We're gonna have an offering and we're gonna give in our offering today, amen? If you are, our ushers are going to pass out the envelopes to you. If you are writing by check, please make out the check to CBC or Caris Bible College. If you are giving by credit card, you can write your information on there as well. Please print your name and print your credit card information. Make sure it is very clear for our accounting department. Those of you that are watching online, you can partake in this. So if you would go to awmi.net forward slash healing, it will take you to our Healing Center page. There, if you scroll down to the center of the page, you'll see a screen where you can watch us weekly here at Healing School, but right under that screen is an orange donate button. Once you click that, it takes you to the Student Mission Fund page. And there we have different options for you to give. You can give a one-time gift of $25, $50, $100, $1,000, whatever you want to do to sow into Healing School. But we ask that you prayerfully consider partnering with us here at Healing School. We also have this wonderful feature for all the tech people out there, and it is called Text to Give. So if you text the word give to 844-887-0796. Again, text the word GIVE to 844-887-0796. There you can give to us here at Healing School. When we look at giving and, and partnering, I really want you to really think about partnering with us here at Healing School. In Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse 14, it says, I mean, verse 15, it says, and you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. Verse 16, even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once again. Paul was saying they kept giving and giving and giving. Verse 17, not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. Here Paul was saying that he was seeking an increase not for himself, but an increase for the Philippians that were continuing to give. So when we're asking you to partner with us, that's, that's what we're asking you to do. We want you to increase, amen? We want you to increase. Verses 18 through 20, I have received full payment and more. I, I am well supplied, having received from Ephrodites, I know I said that wrong, the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. Verse 19, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be the glory forever and ever. Paul wanted them to receive from God. God said he will supply every need to, you do have. So if you have a seed, just put it in your hand. We want you to bring it forth. They are not going to pass the buckets. We're going to need you to come forward and bring your offering forward. But God will supply every need. And if it's not enough to meet the need, sow it as a seed. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you right now for these, your precious sheep that have gathered together, Lord God, to hear your word, God. I thank you, Lord God, that you give seed to the sower. I thank you that they have seed to sow, Lord God, and bread to eat in this time, God. I thank you, Lord God, that they are sowing into good ground to get the message out, Lord God, to take it as far and as wide and as deep to preach the gospel of your word. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. And at this time, we'll have Daniel M. Stetz to come forward to introduce our speaker. Please come at this time to bring your offering forward. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving and supporting the healing school. We could never buy a healing, that's for sure. But you know what? Grateful hearts love to give, and we live to give because Jesus gave the best and the most, and we'll never outdo him. Amen? So thank you so much for joining us uh, where you are on the internet as well as here in our auditorium. We sure appreciate that. Praise God. Amen. What a blessing. Well, today we are so blessed to have Sharon and uh, Lamont Rich with us. This is Lamont over here on the keyboard, and uh, they are regulars at our uh, AWM conferences. You've, you've heard them on stage singing. Uh, they were just in the God in God We Trust musical and just did a phenomenal job in that musical. But Sharon is part of our executive management team here at the ministry, and uh, she has been uh, a financial officer for a number of years, and uh, they've been ministers of music in various churches throughout the years, and so they really bring a wealth to ministry experience and to us today. And uh, they've got uh, children and they've got grandchildren and have just done the whole thing. So uh, they're gonna speak today. She's gonna speak to us expressly from a place of experience as well as the Word of God. But I'm really excited, Sharon, for you to be here today because this is the first time that you've been at the Healing School as a speaker. So everybody, let's welcome Sharon Rich as she comes to give us some good news today. Amen? Welcome, Sharon. to be in the house of the Lord and to be with you all today. I honor Mr. and Mrs. Womack. I'm grateful for um, Brother Daniel Amston and Tracy Asia who have invited me here today. It is indeed an honor and a privilege. I believe that God has a word for you. I believe that regardless as to what is going on in this world, all of the distractions, everything that's coming against God, His people, and our nations, and this world, I believe that God has an answer. He is the answer, amen? How many of you know that there is no answer without God? With everything that's been going on, it's become very, very apparent that all of those who should know do not know. We're facing situations that have never been seen on this planet. But we know that before there ever came an opposition or an opportunity for the miraculous, that God already made a way, amen? He is the answer. And there is an answer to every problem. I indeed thank God for my husband being here, Pastor Lamont Rich. It's an honor for he and I to serve this great ministry, Andrew Womack Ministries. And we have seen the hand of God and the favor of God over this ministry. And we've seen their diligence, their faithfulness unto the Lord. Uh, thinking of faithfulness even while, while Daniel and the team were worshiping and while Tracy was giving announcements and giving out gifts. It really struck my heart of their faithfulness to God. A lot of people, my mother used to tell us, she said, if you do things right in secret, it'll always be right. She said she would teach us how to fold t-shirts. And she said, and we, fold them, we folded them like when we was nine, seven, eight, nine, the same way people fold them in the stores now, where you fold it up and then you fold it in, then you fold it up again, then you fold it in and in. Yes, that's how we folded it. And she said, do it as unto the Lord. And so what I have seen both in Daniel and in Tracy is that their commitment to God, that it will have lasting effects. There are some favors from the Lord that only faithfulness bring. That only faithfulness in hidden secret places 
that it brings. And so I believe that's your portion today. Would you please give God a hand for Tracy and Brother Daniel? Such a blessing. Amen? Amen. And today I would like to speak with you from a very familiar passage of Scripture. Many of you, when you think of healing, there are so many uh, miraculous moments that come to mind. And one that really stands out is the healing at the pool of Bethesda. And it really struck my heart when I thought about coming to speak here, given the privilege to speak from this office, that to speak about this gentleman who needed a miraculous healing. It really stood out to me, and because it's such a familiar passage of Scripture, I thought it would also speak to you today. Let's go to the Word. It says, after this, it's in John 5, 1, and it says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Verse 2, now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having, the porch, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the move of the water. Verse 4 says, For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Verse 5, And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When, he, when Jesus saw him and knew that he had been now a long time in that state, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step it down before me. And Jesus said unto him, Rise up, rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him, that was cured. It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. Revisiting verse 5 and 6. And a certain man that was there, which had an infirmity 38 years, when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now so long time in that state, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? Today I will ask you, Will thou be made whole? Now what I love about this passage of scripture is that Jesus did not assume that this individual wanted to be made whole. If we're looking at verse 1 where we're seeing that Jesus had went up to Jerusalem, whenever I see, and thinking of this as far as a Bible study, whenever I see after this, I always want to know what after this pertains to. In this case, it pertains to Jesus having visited Samaria and Galilee. When Jesus visited Samaria and Galilee, there were miracles that were wrought. You will remember the Samaritan woman at the well. This was that visit. This was part of the after this. And so, uh, not only then, but he also brought salvation and brought the message of the kingdom 
to the whole village and the town. And so it was not just this impartation to this woman, but it was also an impartation to this entire village. She gave her testimony, but then they came to hear him themselves. And then later on, after the many things that were done in Samaria, we also see that he went to Galilee. In Galilee, we have the turning of water into wine. And so it's not just uh, when we say afterwards, after this, we want to understand that Jesus, not only has he been among the people meeting the needs of those who he encountered, and he even felt so driven to go to Samaria that he said, I must needs go to Samaria. It's not something that he was doing haphazardly. And so we see as his ministry is developing, and when I say his ministry is developing, on earth we know that from the age of 30 until 33 when he passed away, that those are the years of the miraculous that is spoken of within the Gospels. And so we're looking at uh, about a three-year time and season. It's good to know the time and the season, amen? In anything that you're walking through, whether uh, we're looking at the pattern of Jesus or we're considering our own days, we're learning to number our days and considering what God has sent us into the earth realm to do. Jesus, the divine being, could have stayed in heaven. And he could have stayed on his throne, but he decided to give his life. So before he came here, he had already sacrificed his life. So he then jumped into the role of what he would carry out in the earth realm. So when I'm looking at him going about turning water into wine, why? Because not because his mother just said so, but because the time was then the time and the moment of manifestation of the Son of God now being spoken of and be in the word of the Lord going through him in a peculiar way. And so as he was ministering to these people, after leaving there, we see him going towards the pool of Bethesda. Now, this pool Many things can be said about it. Theologians say that at one time, this pool having five porches, that it was somewhat of what one would call a club, type of club thing. It wasn't where the infirmary, those who had infirmities were. This was a place of the affluence. It was a pool. It was a very stately edifice. So it wasn't like just, um, it had materialized into something that was thought of as ill repute. However, it's beginning, when we're speaking of the two pools, it actually was two pools. One had 50 uh, feet, was a 50 foot pool, and another was a 60 foot pool. And they found the ruins of this particular pool, this, this what we call the Pool of Bethesda. And so with the five porches, it shows the expansion that went along as people who were affluent within that time and period expanded it. Have you ever been somewhere and it seems like it's everything that everyone ever hoped for? It's the thing that's enviable because uh, people have paid great price to be there and they have designated it only to certain types of people and they have inhabited it. And then at some point in life, it becomes stagnant. That's what happened at this pool of Bethesda. It was not, uh, this is not the picture of what it was before. To actually reference what happened in this place, it said that this particular pool was not originally named the Pool of Bethesda. Those who were infirmed who came there later, after this place uh, turned into a place of disrepair, where the waters were not clear, where the pools were not clear. 
These individuals who were infirmed, after hearing that one had received a miracle, they migrated from wherever they were and they came and they laid at this pool. There were so many people at this pool that one kind of uh, likened it unto how one would see packed on sardines. Another theologian says, prior to this becoming the pool where the infirmed were, that when those who were of affluence, when they left, then it became a place where they washed the sheep. And we know that the temple was not far away from there. So they're saying that on the way from uh, coming from whomsoever's uh, farm or where they were raising them in their pastures, that they would bring these sheep through this particular gate. This gate was also known as uh, the gate of Stephen because it was so close to where Stephen was stoned. You know, when, when you live in rural areas, they're like, you know, the red rock. Turn at the red rock. Well, it becomes that kind of thing. It becomes a name simply because everyone who knows about that area identify with events that have occurred there. And so the stoning of Stephen uh, actually became one of the references of this gate. And so then we see not only had those who were rich uh, had used this gate, but then animals going to be um, actually brought to the temple for sacrifice were also brought past this pool. But later on, after it had become a place of disrepair, those who were injured, who were hopeless, who were down and out, who were broken, who were tattered, who were torn, who were helpless, found this place to be a place of hope. Because it is said that in the scripture when it says that there was a stirring of water, there was nothing at the bottom of the pool that would cause there to be a circular motion. It is said that when they said stirring, that the actual uh, word reference to this actually renders it as a circular motion of the water. And so it was something unnatural. And as a result, people began to notice that something is different here. And so they went to a place to receive healing. And so the scripture says that at a certain time, an angel came down into the pool and troubled the water. And whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole and whatsoever disease of whatsoever disease he had. And so when I see this and I see that there was limited miracles. See, when I hear that there was whoever stepped in first, it wasn't a whosoever will let them come, everybody jump into the pool and everyone there on attendance that day that they were healed, but it was the first one who jumped in. Can you imagine 38 years? It does not say how long he had been there. He said it was infirmed for 38 years. And this 38 years, can you imagine however long he had been beside this pool waiting for the troubling of water, the opportunity to advance before another, the competition of being the first one to get in. The one that's having to watch those who were afflicted before, a one who was afflicted to walk away with healing. And to not know again when the healing manifestation of this angel would come again. It's a very peculiar place and it's a very peculiar Position. How does one decide that they will not be jealous and rejoice with them that rejoice when you don't know when your healing, when your manifestation, when your brand new day is coming? How does one encourage themselves year after year after year to hope against all hope? to stand against everything that's in opposition, to believe beyond what you can see? 
How does one encourage themselves to wait patiently before the Lord? The scripture says that he was waiting. And so when we see Jesus, the Lamb of God, walking through the sheep's gate, so when we think of a lamb, a lamb is any, uh, is, is that particular animal from birth until one years old. So he is the lamb of God in the state of his ministry. He's at a lamb stage. And he's walking through the sheep's gate because he knows that he is the perfect sacrifice. He is the answer. He is the healer. And as he, the Lamb of God, slain before the foundations of the world, as he walks through this gate, he knows that he has an answer for something that has existed longer than he has on this earth. <laughs> There are answers that God has put inside or deposited inside of his people that is the answer to the world that far exceeds their years. It far exceeds what the theologians have written about or what the scientists know to look for. Researchers have not heard of this before. They've never put this combination before, but the answer lies within those who believe God. That he sends them as an answer as a sheep among many wolves to bring an answer and to also provide healing, restoration, and strength. And so when I think about the Lamb of God, who then asked this man, I love that he asked him. He said, wilt thou be made whole? He's not intruding or either taking anything for granted just because he is the Lamb of God or just because he's the Alpha and Omega, just because he's the beginning and the ending, just because he's the first and last. He's not taking it for granted Amen. that he knows what this creature who he has created would say. I love this, uh, when I was younger, we were in a service and this individual, this, uh, there was a healing ministry going on and the power of God was present to heal. You know, I've seen many, many miracles, but on this particular occasion, the evangelist, he asked this particular lady, I mean, I remember her name and everything, and he said, wilt thou be made whole? And she informed him that she had a lawsuit going on at this time and that if he would be there next week, that she would be back and would receive healing because she needed the evidence for the court case. How about that? How about that? That happened. And so I really, really, when I was reading this, I really came to me and I was like, and that's why the preacher asked, wilt thou be made whole? <laughs> because it really was a point of decision. He had everything that it took to transform this individual's life. And it really took a matter of will at this moment. It was not something that this guy had to walk out, that he had to uh, already be a believer, that he already had to know about Jesus, but it was a free gift of God. And so what he was asking is, will you be made whole? And so when I also think about this particular individual, when they are coming to a place of healing, and this has been their life for 38 years, whether at that pool or elsewhere, that there is a community that is built around infirmity. When you go to the hospital and you have children, they have a section where you're having the children. Right. You hear babies crying right. and other things. <laughs> And so while there, there are sections, you build a community, whether it's by the caretakers or people who have kind nature, you, you, you form and bond friendships. Yes. 
But those friendships were limited in that they would not push him into the pool. Right. Because they also had a need. So not only had his conversation and his community been built, was built around his infirmity, but everything that had become the reflex of life, why he did what he did, the people who were stationed around him, the surroundings, looking off, seeing the temple, knowing that there's hope in the temple, the people carrying on everyday life in the temple, but he was halted, stuck, lame. And so when Jesus asked him this question, he's also asking him, will thou get a job? Because if you're not going to lay here anymore, and if you cannot beg alms, you will have to find some gainful employment. So all of these things were part of his decision making. So it's not some, some little fly by night question. It's not some uh, hypothetical or, or a question that's um, just uh, apologetic of what he was going to do. But this gentleman, he goes on with telling Jesus about everything that happens to him. Have you ever met someone and you're trying to help them and you ask them, can I do X, Y, or Z for you? And instead of them saying yes or no, they go into this whole dissertation that, that's all about 50 years worth of, or 25, or 35 years, or 38 years, of a collection of events that have brought them to this moment. And they're not able. They're not able. Why? Because this has become their entire communication. So they're not only they are they afflicted in their body, but they are afflicted in their soul. The very way that they think it has become afflicted based on what happened to them. And with this gentleman, we don't even have a name. Everybody needs a name. They said there was a certain man. So he's known by his infirmity, afflicted for 38 years. This is your reference point. That's your name. Like my dad used to say, he said um, he, did, he wasn't for any of us having nicknames. He said, because you can't go look up Bubba in the, in the white pages when you're looking for people later on. So you need a name. And so this gentleman did not have a name as recorded in scripture reference. As it was, we don't know the original name of the pool. So we have a nameless person at a nameless place that's been given a name because of his infirmity and a place that's been given a name because of the association of those who were infirm, who had pain and suffering. But it also was called Bethel, the house of mercy. It was also known as a place that also was a place of grace. When we see the number five in scripture as a Bible study student, we know that when we see five, it is indicative of grace. And so we have the Lamb of God walking into a place of mercy and grace with the gift of God on the inside of him to bring total deliverance to a man that has only known pain and suffering for so long. And so while we're looking at this particular man and we sing how long he's been in that state, and that Jesus, who has not lived 33 years yet, has the answer to a problem that's over 38 years. How many of you in this place believe that God has given you an answer oh, yes. that defies the ages? Yes. That he's given you a word, there is, the, as a, there is a deposit in you that only lies within the, within the inside of your spirit. I think about um, guitars. When one sees a fine crafted guitar and the wood, how it's been assembled, how it's been curved, hollowed out, 
Although you can play the same keys on every guitar, there is a certain sound that comes based on the type of wood, the type of string, how it was hollowed out, where you've kept it the last few days. <laughs> There is a sound. So based on what you've been through, where you've been, where this man was at the pool of Bethesda, when he began to tell his life story, there is a sound that says more than just a regular key. There is a sound that says more than what the regular sound would be of one who wants to be healed. There is a sound that goes beyond him just saying yes to will thou be made whole. And the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, he understood his cry. He understood his answer that was not traditional to everyone else's answer. And he says to him, rise up, take up thy bed, and walk. So what he told him to do, he told him to do something that he could not do before. So this is a miracle that we are witnessing. There are also healings that is a process of time. But this here is a miracle. And within this miracle, we see the Lamb of God restore this gentleman's life back, give him a command that allows him to do something that had not been done before in his life over those 38 years. And he commissions him to walk. When you have an assignment, things that other people cannot do. It's an assignment. He said, take up your bed. So he gave him a command and walk. It is an assignment. For every assignment on your life, there is supernatural provision, there is supernatural ability, and there is supernatural grace and mercy to accommodate the assignment. So we see him taking up his bed and walking, but what do we also see? We see now those of the Jews who said unto him, it's the Sabbath day. So he's been waiting for a season to come along where the water is troubled, where life changes for him, where he receives the same promise or the same expectation of those who were also laying around this pool who had received healing. So now that he receives it, someone says to him, it's the Sabbath. So what they're saying to him, it is unlawful for you to carry a particular carry or to carry out any laborious work on the day of the Sabbath. Now, he's been waiting for a miracle. Have you ever needed a miracle? And while you're receiving your miracle, someone tells you some type of stipulation, yeah. <laughs> some type of boundary that you've crossed based on it does not line up with their agenda. Yeah. And so what do you have to do in those moments? You have to go with the agenda of Jesus. Jesus' agenda is that you may have life and that more abundantly, that you would have hope, peace, joy, that you would have contentment, yes. that your life would be fulfilled, that you would be healed from all of your diseases. Whatever your disease is today, Jesus is your hope. Whatever your disease is today, Jesus is your answer. The healing power of Jesus is not limited. It's not limited. The day will come where thousands will assemble and they will have the testimony that everyone was made whole. There is a day coming when the power of God, whether we're talking about the power of God across this land or across the nations, at this hour, our nations need healing. Yes. They're at a place of being halt, lame. What's halt? It's stopped. 
Halt and stop. There is a hindrance. There is a reason why one cannot go forward, stuck. As if there were a spirit of delay. There's one thing to reset, then there's a spirit of delay. And what we're talking about, a spirit of delay that is induced by something that is not of God. It is an opportunity for the people of God to join together and to believe God for a miracle. Even as this man had the expectation and was waiting for the troubling of the water, for the miraculous to be manifested, we today also have this opportunity to believe God for our nation and for this world. Amen? Amen. Now, when I look at the miracles of Jesus, and I see the various miracles of Jesus, it says in Matthews 9 and 35, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. Now, I have a list of various miracles as recorded by the various Gospels. We see where Jesus heals a, a mute man, and Jesus heals a deaf and dumb man. Jesus heals a crippled woman's spine. Jesus heals a lame man at Bethesda's pool. That's what we just read about. Amen? And Jesus heals a paralytic man. Jesus heals a man's withered hand. And Jesus heals a blind, mute demoniac. Jesus cast out demons and heals many. Now we see on and on, we see that Jesus heals a man born blind. I want to pause at this one because when Jesus heals the man who was born blind, a question was presented. It said, who sinned, he or his mother? And I love that this is a very teachable moment from Jesus. And he says, neither. But so that the will of God and the kingdom of God would come that he would receive the healing power of Jesus Christ. So it then puts to bed all questions as to whether or not anyone who has infirmity, sickness, or disease, is it as a result of their bloodline or of their family association? Does not mean that none does not come because of that. It's putting to bed that these are the reasons. That's not it. It is a spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease. And so he heals the one that was born blind. And then we see where he heals 10 lepers. You know the story. He heals these 10 lepers and only one comes back to say thank you. Only one. It's a sad day when it's not the reflex of people. When it's not the manners that are the norm to say thank you, to show appreciation, gratitude, thanksgiving. And so we see where one of the lepers came back and then it speaks of a man that was healed that had dropsy. He healed him on the Sabbath day. And then there's one of the well-known where the woman with the issue of blood is healed. And this woman, as you know, she has been also isolated because of her infirmity. Have you noticed that the spirit of infirmity or sickness and disease, it is designed to isolate people. I think that people have had a taste of that while we've gone through this COVID situation. People who carried on a normal everyday life were not able to interact, to touch, 
to speak face to face. And the thing about this, little by little, unless you take control, and when I say take control, I'm talking about unless you rule your spirit, it can make you feel as if you're all alone. And when people are left to themselves for times and periods that they do not wish, there are things that they have to fight in the spirit realm as far as maybe uh, their soul feeling downcast or them fighting depression or hopelessness or loneliness. But today, wherever you are, I speak the peace of God to you. And that the comforter the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is there with you even now. And that he is comforting, bringing solace and strength to you. That the word of God that's within your heart, that is rising up and fighting and dispelling everything that's dark. Everything that comes to fight against your strength and your peace and your hope and your contentment. Lift up your head. Hallelujah. Lift up your head. For the hope in the King of Glory is even present with you now. So because of that, we put away weariness. We put away depression. We put away hopelessness. We embrace the strength of God. We embrace the hope of God. The scripture says that Jesus, that God will never leave us or forsake us. Regardless as to what we're going through, where we are in life, God is with us. And he will never, ever leave us. Amen? Amen. Amen. So there are many other scriptures where we're speaking of whether Jesus raises the dead to life Jesus raises a little son. Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. And Jesus raises Jairus' daughter to life. And then there's also other miracles where we see Jesus places the taxes in the fish's mouth. And so when I, just going to go back, when I think about Jesus raising individuals from the dead and then others after him because he left that same resurrection power here in the earth, others raising those who were once dead back to life. I think about, there was a mother named Mother Jessie Lewis when I was growing up. And in 1968, she was on her way to... Um, to a convention. Um, there was a convention that was held in Memphis, Tennessee. She took the train and on that uh, trip to the train, she died on the train. And um, they took her to a mortuary that was one of the relatives of the bishop that was overseeing um, the ministry at that time, the founder and the bishop. His name was C.H. Mason. They took her to one of the relatives' uh, mortuary, and they heard about this church mother passing away. They sent someone to pray for her, and Mother Jessie Lewis, God raised her from the dead. Wow. Raised her from the dead. I'm talking about documented Amen. dead, okay? <laughs> And so all my life, I would hear this lady get up and testify. And she would say, God raised me from the dead. And then she would begin to dance. You know, back in the day, they had a dance that looked like the Charleston. And so we're Pentecostal. <laughs> I'm Pentecostal and charismatic and Kojic, all of them. <laughs> I embrace the whole body of Christ. Amen. And so 
she began to dance and her dance was similar to how what you see on television and they're doing at Charleston. But she would begin to praise and worship God because when there was no answer, God sent an answer and raised her from the dead. I think about my grandmother, Elma White. She had a prayer team. There was a lady who passed away. Her children were on their way to uh, see their mother because they said, you know, if you want to see her, come now. And during that time, she passed away. Well, when her children got there and their mother had already passed away, they sent for my grandmother and, and the prayer team. And they went over and prayed for this woman. And the woman sat up. She had been dead for some hours. Sat up, talked to her children, asked them, why did you bring me back? Woo. That's different than your mama saying, why did you go in the cookie jar? Why? why did you bring me back? And she began to describe to them heaven. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then she, she told them, I'm going back where Jesus is. The lady laid down and closed her eyes back in death. When you have finished your course and you're ready to go and you've seen a glimpse of heaven and you know that there is no more sickness, illness, all of those things that infirm our world, whatever it is. When you've seen a glimpse of heaven, there is nothing to be desired of this world. My mother told us before she left, she said, my assignment is up. She said, I'm going home to be with Jesus. And I told her, I said, I believe God will give you another assignment if you let him go. Mom, she said, uh, she said, no. She said, I'm going home to be with Jesus. When you have lived a life, when you have lived a life and your days are full and you decide you've had enough and you don't want another assignment, there comes a point in your life where you have pleased the Father so much, he will ask you, he will ask you, what do you want? Oh, there is, a, there is a season where he asks you, what do you want? It's because you've been faithful. You've been steadfast. You've been loyal in secret places. And God can trust you. And when God can trust you, there is nothing that he will not give to you. Nothing. And he will cause every enemy to be made low. Amen. Whether your enemy is in your flesh, whether your enemy is outward or inward, he will cause your enemy to turn on itself and give you victory every, every time. Every time. Thanks be to God who always giveth us the victory. He always causes us to triumph. So when I think of all of these miracles, I remember our mother would call us to prayer late at night and she would say, our father at one time worked midnight. My mother would call us to prayer and she would begin to decree and declare healing, salvation, strength, hope, deliverance. She would begin to decree and declare what we would be regardless of what the odds said we had to be. She would declare, decree and declare healings. Amen. We were around her bed like those, like those people were at the pool of Bethesda. We, was, we weren't infirm, but we were laying around her bed. And she would pray. It was nothing to go to sleep here, Mama pray, and then wake up and the sun's coming up in the morning. And she said, God, you make a way. Hallelujah. You open doors that no man can open. You shut every adversary. I would hear her pray. She would pray for the saints near and far. Pray for our nation. Pray for our leaders. And when you grew up in this type of atmosphere and you've seen God do miracles, remember my sister had what was one of my sisters had, what was the development of scoliosis and her back was beginning to, uh, to protrude. And mom began to pray. And my grandmother, as I already mentioned, she was a praying woman. They began to pray. And my aunts. And God gave us a miracle. 
Less than, I'm thinking back about three years ago, my niece, who they gave a 10% chance, my sister is now studying for, uh, as a nurse practitioner. Uh, so she was familiar with everything that was going on and they said they gave her daughter uh, a 10% chance. And uh, there were many things going on with her body and to the point that the blood was not circulating correctly. It only was circulating primarily in the upper part of her body body, keeping the organs alive. And she sent me a picture and she said, Sharon, these are the lips of a dead person. And God gave us a, you hear me? God gave us a miracle. They sent everywhere, looking, this is about three years ago, about three, Lamont? They, they sent everywhere, um, Barnes Jewish Hospital, Wash Uni University, they were sending across the world because everything that was supposed to work would not work. And my sister, knowing all that she knows medically, told them, she said, I see what the charts say, I see what's going on, she said, but this is what I need you to do. I need you to keep her alive while God gives us a miracle. <laughs> Hallelujah! Glory to God. And God gave us a miracle. Our family would get on joint calls, we would have... Um, whether or not the Zoom calls, what do they call them, Lamont? The calls where everyone can log in, call in. And so, mm -hmm, brothers, sisters, cousins, uh, in-laws, outlaws, everybody came together and began to pray and decree a miracle. We didn't say you had to be saved to believe for the miracle. We know you was raised to believe in miracles. We need your strength in this hour. We need you to say that God's going to give us a miracle. And God gave our family a miracle. My sister told them, she said, she said, I walked in here with my baby. She said, and I'm walking out with her. So when she was leaving the hospital after being there, I think 42, 43 days, after being in the hospital for 43 days, I remember after my father had visited her and prayed for her, he said, um, he said, what I see, he said, I see her as an older woman. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. You've got to get a vision yeah. of what you want. You've got to decree and declare that regardless as to what the charts are saying, what the documentation says, we thank God for the, for the uh, physicians. Like my mother said, they already told you they was practicing. Now, so my thing is, is while they're practicing, trying to get it together, and they say, well, that didn't work, let's try this. They told you they're practicing. So while they're getting it together, finding out exactly what combination works for you, and God giving the increase, Increase, we decree and declare everything that goes in your body is working for your body. Nothing is working against it. That he nullifies every drug, every application that, that does not specifically cater to your needs. Amen. He's the God of all flesh. Yes. And there is nothing too hard for him. Amen? Amen. So when I think of all these miracles, and I think of these individuals, whether we're thinking of this man who was lame, or we're thinking of all of these others, I think about all the names that are associated with them, the things that they've been called. Sometimes when you're different, people lay names on you. But that's why it is important that we tell our children who they are from day one. Yes. 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 You know, there, <laughs> there's a movie called The Help, and there's this lady who's the maiden. She's saying, you is kind, you is sweet, you is important. Well, that was my family, because while we're growing up, my aunts, my mom, my dad, they say, you are above only and not beneath. You're the head and not the tail. You always come out victorious. Yes, you can do it. Whatever it is, you have the ability. Because greater is he that's in you. I'm talking about from a child. They was like, greater, oh yeah, you got the greater one on the inside of you. My Henri used to say, as great as God is, he's deposited that on the inside of you. So his ability, his understanding, his skill, his application, his know-how, his discernment, his strength, his hope. It's on the inside of you. The healing power of Jesus Christ. Yes. 
is on the inside of you. So all of these things, we simply make a demand on it. And we call it forth in Jesus' name. So, how do we move from hindrances to receive healing? Now, when I think of hindrances that stand against receiving healing, sometimes the pain becomes so big, it's been so magnified because it is so excruciating that we can't think of how big God is. Since moving here to Colorado, I look out at the mountains sometime and I remind myself that the earth is his footstool and that there is nothing too great for God. And so when we look at these things, we look at what God is, but we remind ourselves that regardless as to what we are encountering, whether it be pain, suffering, or rejection, that he has already given us a label. He's already given us a name. We are an overcomer. We are victorious. We are above only and not beneath. Amen? We are the healed of the Lord. With his stripes, we're healed. Then we also look at another hindrance. Some people look at past transgressions and sins. It kind of ties back again, as does the, uh, the one in regard to bloodline infirmities. It kind of ties back to one's past, what they've been doing before. There are individuals that think that they'll never think another straight thought because of drugs or either medications that they've taken that have altered their ability to comprehend and to gather information. But the devil is a lie. Every curse is broken in Jesus' name. If it has a name, it's going to bow to the name of Jesus. Amen? So then we also look at a lack of knowledge and false doctrine. They kind of go together. When I'm thinking of false doctrines, there are doctrines that say that there, the healing is, uh, that it was of the past. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Yeah. Because today we need a healing for Corona, amen? amen? How many of you know that the healing power of Jesus Christ is available to heal those who are suffering with corona, amen? And with other diseases. He is the Lord God, our healer, and there is nothing too hard for him. Amen. So when I think also of a lack of knowledge, the lack of knowledge, often one has been taught false doctrines, are things that do not embrace the healing power of Jesus Christ. Some people believe that it's for everyone else except for them. I'm sure that this guy at the pool of Bethesda, that he thought the same. That this is everyone, everything good happens to everyone else but not me. That's a lie from the pit. You were chosen in him before the foundations of the world. So healing, which is the children's bread, It is your portion. If it was the children's bread in the Old Testament, it is your privilege in the New Testament. Amen? Amen. I'm a believer. How about you? I believe, God, that it is my portion for everything, from a splinter to an affliction. I believe God for healing. Amen? Amen? If I can't believe him for a headache, If I can't believe him for a beast thing, I'm not going to believe him for something huge. So practice, practice your healing. Walk out your healing. Amen? Amen. So then we look at all of the things that would be a hindrance to receiving your healing. And I think that Isaiah, Isaiah 53 shows that everything that we can associate with anything that would bring infirmity, sickness, or disease, that it has been addressed and prophesied that the Savior, the Messiah, would encounter it. Isaiah 53, starting at verse 2, says, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, 
And as a root out of dry ground, he hath no form nor comeliness. And when he, we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men. The same thing that this gentleman had encountered, he was rejected. He was a castaway. A man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has bore our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. So we did not see him as it was true. He was not smitten of God. He was presented by God to be the lamb slain. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. It goes on to talk about how he was oppressed and afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare this generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgressions of my people was he stricken. So then we also look at 1 Peter 2, 23, 25. So Isaiah is prophesying it, but Peter is giving the account. He's saying when they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. He did not throw a stone for a stone, give a word for a word. He did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threat. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were like sheep gone astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your soul. Give God a hand for his word. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, what does it mean to be made whole? Merriam Dictionary says that it is free of wound or injury, unhurt, recovered from a wound or injury, restored, being healed whole, free of defect or impairment, intact, physically sound and healthy. Physically sound and healthy goes along with what has been spoken of in the Hebrew. Physically sound and healthy. Mentally and emotionally sound, as a now is a complete amount or some number, total lacking, no part. Something constituting a complex unity, a unity to behold. So when I think of what embracing healing looks like, I cause all of my members, the way I think, what I do, what I say, how I interact with individuals, I cause it to believe God's word, okay? So everything that I'm doing, so this gentleman, he had to go get a change of attire. He had to change his associations. He had to change his location because he was embracing healing and believing God's word. You also have to renew your mind. How do we renew our mind? With the word of God. With all the news that's coming on, everything that we're hearing across the land, you need to, you need, how Jesus said, I must needs go to Samaria. You must needs renew your mind <laughs> with the word of God. Page by page, 
If, you, if your eyes are hurting, put on the word of God from the internet. You can play it all day, every day. Eight hours of healing scriptures. Eight hours of faith statements. Infuse your atmosphere with the atmosphere of faith. For everything that you've heard negative, they say that you have to hear something 17 or 19 times positive. So if someone says something, they call you someone negative, you need to hear uh, 17 to 19 affirmations that are good about you. Say something, look in the mirror. If you have no one and you don't have the internet on a particular day, look in the mirror. Yeah. Say you are kind. Yes. You are blessed going in and coming out. Health is your portion. Yes. Tell yourself. Yes, amen. You have the character of Christ Jesus. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Affirm those things that are within your innermost being. Why? Because you can take away a lot of things, but only you, you have the opportunity to give back and sow back into your spirit that which is blessed. I am going to the slide where it talks about healing our land, okay? Second Chronicles 7 and 14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now, in America, God is calling forth those who would not only believe for personal healing, but healing for America and for our world. Do you see? He's calling for the body of Christ as we believe, just as we believe for healing in our bodies, we need to believe, raise up intercessors, those who are of like faith, who will believe God for the healing of this nation. From every ailment, from everything, whether it's something that's older than what we are, whether it's something that came across yesterday, are today. Jesus is the answer. He is our healer. He is, he is the only way, the truth, and the light. And the entrance of his word gives light to the answer. Amen? Amen? More than anything, before we are anything, before we're Americans, we are the blood bought the redeemed. Yes. The believer. So that's who we identify with. And if he says that a believer can have it, that counts for me. That if, if, if a believer is acting as Christ Jesus and, and exuding his presence, carrying out his character, then that's how we are to do. And we're to pray it into the earth realm. God will have a people who will pray it into the earth realm. Also Acts 17 and 23 says, from one man made he all nations. So it's a global thing. We found out that we're all connected. Amen? Yes. That they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their Lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live, move, and have our being. Then when I think about the body of Christ, I want to know, is Christ divided? No, but he is whole, right? So, when we look at this picture of is Christ divided, you will see the image of a man, you'll see various names everywhere. Is he Hispanic? Is he black? Is he male? Is he rich, poor, European? All of these things may be a part of the composite of Christ, but he is holy. Yeah. That's what he is. He is holy and he is seeking for a holy people. And so when we're talking about the body of Christ, we are the one body of Christ, the blood bought, the redeemed, those who he have taken out of the kingdom of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. We are the blood bought, the redeemed, the believer. Amen. And so Christ is not divided, and we see him in unity. So it's a picture of unity. 
Psalms 133 says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garment, as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountain of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing evermore. Life forevermore. So when we think about what commands the blessing of healing, what commands the blessing of unity, what commands the blessing of the miraculous, what commands the blessing of faith, what commands the blessing of hope, what commands the blessing of going forward from this place with victory, it is the spirit of unity with the body of Christ rising up, praying for our leaders. Praying for our president, praying for our police officers, praying for our civilians, praying for all those who inhabit the earth and believe in God for victory over Corona. Amen. Stand please with me today. If in your life you know that you need God's intervention, that you have a situation that only he can handle, whether I'm thinking about something that other people would think of as something that's very small or what those things that they have no answer for. I believe God for you here in this place today and those are far off. And so I send the healing power of Jesus Christ that raises the every dead situation that heals those who are depressed, cast down, those who've been given very detrimental information and a forecast that is not good. We turn it today in the realm of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that by the power of your might and through your healing power and what you have rendered at Christ Calvary, that every strike that you bore for us, that every thorn that was put in your head, Every time you were submitting over 600 times where your face was unrecognizable. We thank you, God, that you are the restorer of health, life, and strength. We ask that you would heal not only bodies today, that you would not only heal cancer, diabetes, depression, lymphoma, brain aneurysms. Hallelujah. Stomach cancer. Hallelujah. Arthritis. Pain and disease. Every affliction. Every cast down soul. We speak the life of Christ Jesus. We speak the healing power of Jesus Christ. Be manifested and illuminate your body. And that the same Lamb of God that healed the man at the pool of Bethesda heals you today, mends you today, restores you today, advances you today. That there is nothing, nothing that's in your life that Jesus has not already provided healing and restoration for. Father, we receive your healing. We receive your hope. We receive your strength. We speak strength into limbs in the name of Jesus. We speak vision into eyes. Clarity in the name of Jesus. We command deaf ears to be open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We command the mute to speak. We command those who cannot comprehend to learn again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every brain damage. We speak the healing power of Jesus Christ. Autism, we rebuke you in Jesus' name. We speak that the Lamb of God who was slain heals you in Jesus name thank you God for a brand new day thank you for giving him the life back again thank you for restoration thank you for healing in the foot in the name of Jesus 
We bind pain in the lower abdomen. In Jesus' name, we speak to rotator cuffs and we command them to be healed in Jesus' name. We rebuke arthritis, gout, in the name of Jesus. We, could, we declare that the blood is purified as it flows through their vein. We bind blood clots in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We speak to respiratory systems of those who are ventilators. And we speak the life of Christ Jesus flowing through their lungs. The healing power of Jesus Christ heals every disease. Every infirmity bows at the name of Jesus. Our Lord, our God, our friend, our Father. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Jesus, for the things you have done and what you're going to do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Anyone in here today who is hurting, who has sickness and disease, please raise your hand and receive from the Lord. He is the Lord, your healer. Hallelujah. The healing power of Jesus Christ. Address every need. Every need. Every need. You are the Lord God, our healer. We give you praise and glory. Adoration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we praise you in advance. We do what we could not do before. We hope as we've never hoped before. We see now as we've never seen before that the manifestation of the promises of God that are yes and amen, that we possess them, that it is our rightful inheritance and that we walk in it with hope and strength. We bless you today, Jesus. Hallelujah, give him praise. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just raise our hands all over this place and wherever you're joining us from in the end. What an incredible word. Lord, we bless you today. We lift up holy hands to bless you, to say thank you that you did what none of us could do, that you paid the price for us to be able to live this life as you have declared we can, that we would do the same works, that we would live life abundantly. Lord, it's your will that we would prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. Lord, we bless you for that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. You are worthy, Lord. Worthy, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Lord. Worthy to be praised. No one like you. Never been, never will be. Another beside you. You are Lord. You are the great physician. And we praise you. Yes, Lord, you are worthy. Worthy. Oh, I tell you, there's just something about praising God. There's something about praising God. The Bible says in everything to give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Do you know that God is more for you than you can even imagine, than you can even think? And as for you as he is, he wants to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Hallelujah. Steve, I'm telling you, this is going to be a great year for you this year. God's going to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Hallelujah. Those of you who are prayer ministers and those of you who are assisting us in our healing school, it's going to be a good year for you. I'm telling you, I, I said this when I was teaching last week at the healing school, but I heard on the news a few days ago 
uh, from one of our leading health experts, quote unquote, that the worst is yet to come. <laughs> and I said, I know that's your report, but I'm not receiving that report because I've got a better report. I've got a different report that tells me the best is yet to come. Hallelujah. You see, however it gets here on the earth, this is all just temporary because we're going to keep our eyes on the prize. We're going to keep our eyes on what really matters. Sharon, what an incredible word today. Oh my God, my God, my God. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your heart, your life experience. Did I not tell you when we gathered today? Amen. Lamont, thank you so much. I, I think we should do this every week, personally, you know? <laughs> what a blessing. Tracy, would you come on up? We've been able to be interactive in our healing school since the whole COVID thing hit. And our team uh, made some additional changes to our healing school format. And so uh, what's been going on on the internet? Do we got, have anything? Oh, yeah. Actually, oh, yeah. We, we even had some more from last week. Rosemary on Facebook, she said that um, some words were going forth. She said, I had those symptoms. I claim my healing and my victory. Praise God. Um, Nancy on Facebook, she said that she spoke with one of the prayer ministers online named David, and she said that they prayed, and she's continuing to pray. She knows that he continued to pray after the call, and I believe, she said, I believe that multiple back injuries are completely healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, Timon, uh, Timotin, I don't even know if I said that right, on Facebook said, hallelujah, I'm receiving my healing and I received the word of knowledge. Annette on Facebook, she said that her mom had kidney problems. She's taking it for her mother, praise God. She was standing in the gap for her mother. Teresa on YouTube said that I believe that I just received confirmation that her thyroid condition is completely healed. Come praise on now. Praise God, that's awesome. That is wonderful. Amen. And praise God, uh, Diane on Facebook said, thank you, Jesus. She said she felt a tingling sensation of the Holy Spirit in her body during worship. She said when it started, she said she was tired, she was worn out, but now she's full of joy and she can't stop smiling. Come on. Come on, somebody. Oh, yeah. Come on, somebody. That's what I'm talking about. Did I tell you, I told yeah. you, did I not tell you that my sister was going to bless you today? I told you that she was going to bless you. She called out a number of things from the platform that she was praying for, and I encourage you, as you're listening to this and you listen to the archive version, please send us those testimonies because we want to hear about you being healed. Amen? You know, there's good news happening everywhere. We just have to be dialed into the oh right channels. If you're always watching CNN, constantly negative news, that's what it stands for, CNN. <laughs> you know, or you can watch, you know, as Andrew says, the 10 Spies Network. Right? And come up with an evil reports have been around for a long, long time. Bad reports have been around for a long, long time. But Jesus said, I came to give you good news. Amen. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Yes. How many of you know good news is better than bad news? Thank you, Amen. Sickness Thank you, Lord. is not even comparable Hallelujah. to health. Thank Hallelujah. You, I've been sick and I've been healed, Lord, and healed Lord, is better. Lord, Glory Lord, to God. Lord, Amen. Amen. And I just speak to Ellie right now. Yes. And I come against that dizziness right now in the name of Jesus. I command your equilibrium to be restored yes. to its natural state, that you will level out, that you will not feel dizziness. Dizziness, you have to go now in the name of Jesus. Jesus, Amen. you have no place in her body. Her body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, and yes. you have got to go now in that's Jesus' right. name. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, here's the thing that starts to happen. You become contagious mm. with healing. Yes. And so wherever you go, guess what else goes? Healing. Healing. Healing just is in you and it flows out from you wherever yes. you go. Mm. So you know what? We've got such a wonderful opportunity right now, right now, right now in 2020 right now. to be the hands and feet and eyes and, and voice of Jesus, of Jesus to our culture today. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Prayer ministers, would you come and uh, get into position? 
And I thank God for our prayer ministers. If you have come today and you've already received your healing, bless God, you are free to go. But if you would like some personal ministry, laying on of hands mm -hmm. and, and prayer, additional ministry, uh, these prayer ministers are here to do exactly that. And that's why they've come. Let's all stand to our feet and we'll wrap this up today. Yeah, what a great time. I'd rather be here in the healing school than the best hospital anywhere. Hallelujah. This is good news territory. Yes. Father, we're so grateful. Thank we you, give you Jesus. praise and thanks for who you are and for what you've done. Thank you, Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you paid the price for us to be able to not only live this life, but to be able to give it away. Thank you. Lord, we are so grateful. Thank you, Jesus. We are overwhelmed with gratitude. Oh, la, 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 la. And Lord God, thank you that we can now, because our hearts have been changed, our lives have been transformed, mm. our minds are being renewed to the kingdom way instead of the worldly way. Yes, Lord. Lord God, now, mm. Lord, out of this place, we can give it and give it and give it. Freely we have been given Yes. And now freely mm -hmm. we can give. Yes, Lord. Lord, we give you all the thanks and the glory for it. Mm -hmm. And everybody said in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We will be back at one o'clock next week. And thank God, what's our what's our agenda next week? Next week we will have Pastor Greg Moore. That's teaching. right. Yes. Yes, yes. He will be speaking next week. So tell your friends. Yes. And uh, we're going to have a great time again next week. But those yes. of you who have come for ministry, come on. Our ushers will assist you. Come yes. on down and let our prayer ministers minister mm -hmm. to you. And God bless you. We love you.